Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany, episode number 25, I hope. We had some, another fan submission from Crowman, <laughs> a Crivian. I, I don't know how to say his name again, but uh, he submitted a artistic rendering of the Blucher. Um, yeah, it, uh, it looks like it could be even faster than 19 or 20 knots. So, well, that's good. <laughs> also, I might have a slight echo in this video. I just realized I haven't set up all my soundproofing stuff. But it's too hot for that anyway, right? Anyway, so what has happened? Well, in the last episode, we finished, concluded the Franco-Prussian War. It went our way. We got a 10-point victory, which is, you know, not anything to be... Uh, I, I don't know, I, I basically just want to say it's not, it's quite a good result. On top of that, we actually took a uh, Tonkin as well. The only downside is that we lost Marshall Islands to a rebellion and we probably could have saved that. The British lost the Falkland Islands and that's also, you know, kind of bad news for everyone even though it does weaken the British and I'm, you know, especially Tortrupit, excuse me. Torturpitz is very, very happy about that. Anything anti-British is a good thing for Torturpitz. So what's our plan in this episode? Um, we are pretty short on funds, as we can see. We do want to replenish some of our submarine force, which has been... I don't know, I guess it's pretty fair to say just eradicated from... We got, uh, what were we up to, like 80 submarines at some point? And now we're back down to 19, so, you know, it comes and goes. And unfortunately, quite a few of the coastal submarines survived. <laughs> Five, but if we were to build new ones, I believe we're above 64, so they would be more effective. They've served us really well. Actually, you know what? Maybe they haven't. <clears throat> I said that, but then immediately I kind of... They didn't bring France to a total collapse despite months upon months of working on them while we had a full blockade too so i'm not really that uh i'm not as happy with the mechanic as i i thought i would be anyway i think we're gonna have to push forward a few months before anything interesting develops for now we'll just be starting to i think antagonize the british a bit it's not going to be an easy fight, my goodness. We It's 15 to 16, but if you take a look... I guess that's actually about... about even. They must be rebuilding some that are not counted here. Because they can't possibly have two dreadnoughts... At, like, 70,000 tons each. <laughs> 100 and... 60,000, so 80,000 tons each is the missing amount. Um, they also have 20 battle cruisers. I mean, they're just, they have, it will be very difficult for us to go to war with them. The carriers aren't really, I don't know how many points strategically carriers count for. I mean, it's completely unknown to me. We have our one battleship, which is probably back. I don't know, part of me thinks that maybe it's not yet time to take to take on Great Britain. We are developing. We are should be improving. We should continue to improve as this game advances. So we need um, Great Britain to hit their hit their lull. And I don't think they're there yet. I think France would be a good option here and Russia. I mean France, poor France, right? But Russia would be a great option as well. Let's take a look at what Russia has. I mean France is so down in the dirt right now they're just crazy depleted on forces and Russia has actually gone much more heavily into submarines than France which means that maybe France is actually a better option here okay I mean from us from a I mean if we had just won a victory against France they are kind of in a weakened state and it's best I mean, in a, it's kind of a terrible thing, but it's just, in some ways actually best to pounce upon the dead corpse, you know, just basically to 
cannibalize what's left of the the empire let the french empire essentially just dissolve and this is very historical you know once the foundation begins to founder you do get a lot of this where all the different vultures come in and pick at the corpse so we'll um for now we'll just uh raise us i would say escalate tensions with france i feel bad for the british actually um speaking of submarines the new naval secretary wants us to build more of them I think an okay, and of course here, is warranted. Our <clears throat> prestige is high enough that we can we've essentially have bought ourselves the possibility of um, avoiding this build requirement and still not really being affected too much by it. So we have new prototypes for our flying boats. This new, so the new ones are all faster Two of them have longer range. So it looks like the bottom two are the ones we're looking between now. And this one has the better statistics. 173, 216, 310. And it's not quite as fast, which may actually be, well, it, the difference in speed is pretty minor. The difference in maneuverability is maybe not substantial anyway. So it's the question is, do we want this one a little bit faster? I mean, the cruise speed is really what's more important actually between these two because maximum speed is a combat statistic. Whereas cruise speed is, uh, you know, the actual search uh, statistic. I guess the values is so close that we'll just take the middle one. I mean, technically the longer range could be better too. So do we want the extra 15 nautical miles? It could be important. It's probably the most important thing besides, no, I mean, it is the most important thing. And it is a little bit faster too. Okay, we'll just go ahead and convince ourselves that the bottom one is better then. And I think we should immediately begin doing something else. So we'll um, obsolete this one. This is the trick I was talking about last episode or a couple episodes ago. You can obsolete the most recent flying boat even as the new one's in development and then it'll, the new one will immediately start replacing the old ones as soon as it gets out. And I think it's time for another float plane scout just because the reliability on this one is poor. So I think that the, to me the obvious things to ask for are range and reliability. Hopefully we get it something above poor and we'll see what happens. Budget is now positive, so that's a good thing, good sign. I'm always a fan of these little events which give you budget up at not too much tension. Carrier force, carriers will operate in separate force. I don't even know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Some people have even asked for an ability to turn it off. <laughs> Cause you might want your carrier force acting very closely in concert with your surface fleet. It's basically a, a, a doctrine question, and I can see how people would complain about being spoon-fed a doctrine. You know, you might not want to do it, play the by the game's rules, essentially. I got a bug flying around my face. So the Otter, the Grossa, say I finally said it right. Um, she's going to be scrapped. Not that she's back for 640. Um, museum ship. Maintenance will cost as if she was mothballed. Yeah, you know, I can't... It's just hard for me not to... It means that we have a permanent maintenance decrease. I mean, per, per, bleh, permanent maintenance uh, fee for her. But... I think it's worth it. We'll sacrifice it in the name of role playing. The prestige it does not bother me. Now the question is, with this budget, maybe I actually should invest in twenty one submarines. How many? How much? How expensive would that be? So ten is two million. Twenty one would be four point two million. We'll wait another month. I 
I don't remember when we got the request, but maybe we will wait even one more month. Obviously, we don't have the means to do that right now. Although, I, I mean, it's nice to be able to do some submarine activity. I just, I get, again, I was just very disappointed by the results from the last war. So we have a total of seven fire dracas coming in. That's crazy. That will probably be our last dedicated battlecruiser um, class, though. I mean, it'll be seven of them for 266,000. We'll be well behind most nations. Thankfully, we'll be ahead of the likes of Italy and France. We'll even technically be behind Russia, which is a little unusual, but Russia's the only other nation with a carrier in service or even being built, which is very bizarre considering Russia is not normally who you would peg as a, uh, a nation who needs some carriers. <laughs> I mean, in this game, they're not the naval power that they come to be post-World War II. They're definitely, I mean, based on their budget, we can see that they're far from it. In fact, they're almost the worst nation in the game. Okay, so this is perfect. We need that technology. Perfect time for the improvement of submarines. And, okay, 11-inch guns. Get mad at France. Again, we could go back to war with France. That's a perfectly viable option, in my opinion. Actually, with this extra money, I think that building those submarines is actually okay. So, unfortunately, they're going to cost a bunch, but we got a, just right as we get some tick, we'll go ahead and start building a lot of them. One more. I don't care. I don't care what the name is. So good, we can go, you know, six months with this, now five months with that. And then we can just put a bunch of them on pause. They should be good quality. Yeah, we'll demand that they release the, uh, the ship. Later air launch torpedoes, that would be nice. Okay, we got an improved fighter. Um, I don't know what the old one it looks like, which is a little unusual. Why don't we... Oh, I see. It's just an improved model of an obsolete version, but it's, yeah, it's actually the best one. Oh, almost. It's almost the best one. In fact, it's the best one in every way, except for, of course, the most important statistic for a fighter, which is firepower. Now, the last time we did pretty well, uh, wait, no, never mind. I'm thinking of my Japanese series. Boy, I really got to start sticking to only one series. It's, it can be easy, very easy to, you know, kind of, uh, mix them all up. Okay. Industrial. Okay. The rebellion in Burma continues. Um, what do you recommend? We can negotiate an agreement. I'd love to negotiate an agreement with the U.S. or with... Ugh, they're the enemy. They are the enemy. The United States is going to be pretty useless to us. And I actually feel like we're in a pretty good position for war right now. So I think we're going to go with this second option. Now, the two things I'm thinking of doing are refitting any of our ships with director or anything like that that we need. Yes, yeah, so these need to be refit. Luckily for us, it won't be a very extensive refit. It's just improved director. Yikes. Which we... <laughs> okay, just kidding. It might be a 12-month refit. We can get director though, right? I hate to do two different things. What else can we do? Yeah, we're going to need director for the secondary guns as well, which is also going to be expensive. Technically, we have the improved quality guns, and I think that those are worth doing. Actually, I'm a little surprised. 
Okay, I'm not a little surprised. I'm actually a lot surprised that replacing the turrets didn't give us better weight. That means there's no there's been no turret savings for a very long time. <laughs> when did these get built? 1907. So there's been no turret savings of technologies in 17 years. Wow. But be that as it may, it's what we're dealing with here. So we do need to I mean, an, an obvious easy thing to do is just to try to nip off a little bit of the turret armor. The turret armor is definitely better. I mean, 11.5 of the new turret stuff that we just got is still probably better than 12 inches of belt. Um, or 12 inches of the old armor. Although I'm not exactly sure if the turret armor is measured differently. Maybe the turret armor is always considered the same effectiveness as your belt. That'd be a good question for Frederick. Anyways, I guess what we're going to have to do is what I, you know, was expecting we're going to have to do is this. We might even drop this down to 105. I don't really want to, but I'm thinking that we probably would benefit from some dual purpose guns at this point. So we could get um, 10. It might even be, I'm actually going to forgo this for now. I think that these will just not ever get the uh, the better guns. And we'll just probably do some light anti-aircraft. Okay, so 15 light anti-aircraft. Still plenty of ammunition. Very good secondary guns. I know that these are only 12-inch guns and only three centerline turrets for that. Unfortunately, this is a rather expensive rebuild, but I think that this as a dreadnought is actually, first of all, it's fairly inexpensive in terms of maintenance, even compared to the Blukers and the Gneisenaus. And I think that she's still combat effective. I think that three centerline turrets, although it's not much, it's really, it's only six 12-inch guns, but they will be 12-inch, they will be quality one 12-inch guns. I think that this is a very good, like, uh, foreign stations type dreadnought. Can exert a lot of pressure, put some pressure on for like invasions and stuff. Ah oh, yes, we can go with increased elevation as well. That's going to further increase her accuracy and obviously her range. In fact, she's going to increase her accuracy because it's going to increase her range. And I guess we'll just go ahead and rebuild her as is. So this will be very expensive to do. I don't want to rebuild all of them. <laughs> we'll probably just rebuild like one or two at a time. Because we also want to stagger the amount of ships that, oh, you know, we don't even need these out. <laughs> we don't even need them out for the war with France, actually. What else do we need besides more capital ships? I think the capital ships, uh, someone has already mentioned, they might, that um, the AI, oh my gosh, it's true. The AI is a very top heavy. They have like five more battleships, let's say. Okay, let's just add these numbers together about 16. To, so they have about eight times more capital ships than they do light cruisers. That does not make sense. <laughs> so we're getting into Fictitionville here, or Fictionville. It's gonna make this game a little bit weird. Hopefully that this is, ah, okay, they crushed ropes. Okay, hooray, we got our praise, which is just one prestige. Not a big deal. Oh my gosh, how many times is this event gonna fire? Uh, I really don't know. So if you're asking yourself what the 10% discount in price is, it's just the fact that it's in 30 months rather than 33. So this event, if it fires for the British, I guess it doesn't amount to even a 10% discount. I mean, for crying out loud, we already have seven of them. Still, they are a pretty good ship class. I mean, I'm, what, they're nine 16 inch guns, right? We're not looking at them here, but I guess we can just find out. I can go over here and just take a look for myself. We have some that have already finished. Four inch deck, which is fantastic. They have good light anti-aircraft guns. Eight 
It is a really good class. Oh man, this is really putting my feet to the to the coals here. Because I almost always accept this. A 10% discount is making this ship even more valuable than it already is. Unfortunately, the than it already is <laughs> comment is not quite as valuable as it was when it was first, you know, coming off right out of the designs. When it was just first being manufactured. I mean, we've have a few had a few of these in service for a long time now. What's worse is it's going to put my monthly balance behind and if I want carriers, which I do, it's going to be I mean, what are the costs of these things? I guess I cannot tell from this. I wish I had scrolled up. Oh, wait, right here. 740 for maintenance. Goodness. These are expensive. I think we're not going to do it. Oh, but this is a once in a lifetime thing that has happened three times so far in our lifetime. But uh, we're going to want some battle cruisers to do battle with the other battle cruisers. I can always accept it and then scrap it. Okay. Uh, we will not consider concessions. And we have um, reduces HP requirement, this is good. We're not really concerned with the airships too much. And our prototypes are now ready for evaluation. So it looks like this is a lot better. These are all faster, they're all longer range. Yeah, in every way they're better except for firepower, which is obviously not what you really care about in your float plane scouts. Toughness would be nice. Unfortunately, I'm seeing that it's a little bit worse. This is the one that sticks out to me. It also has the longest range. It has incredible range for heavy. And it's also the fat... Wow. It's just too good to be true. So we'll just take this one right off because it's by far the best. Okay, and we'll immediately go and obsolete our old version, which truly is obsolete by comparison with that new one coming up. The new fighter is developed, but again, this is a tough thing with the four and three, I don't know which one's actually better. I kind of left both of them, so maybe if we got an upgrade of this one for extra firepower, it would make it clearly superior. If this one gets an upgrade, which maybe increases its speed or its maneuverability, its toughness, then it once again becomes the clear front runner. I guess at this point it's really time to cycle back to our torpedo bomber. I think this was a pretty good version, but it's 19, well, it's only 1923 or 24. It's only been a year. Hmm. I still think the torpedo bomber is the next up because it's probably the most important plane for us in actual battles. So what do we want to do? We want range. I think we don't, well, yeah, we do want range. What else do we want? Reliability? Yes. We'll see what happens if I choose those two. Yeah, we wanted money for upgrades, and instead all what we ended up doing is starting to build a... Uh, dude, we really do want to get rid of these two. I mean, these we don't want to get rid of them. We want to upgrade them. And I think that they'll stick around into the 1930s, through the 1930s, maybe even to 1940. Our oldest dreadnoughts. We will always inflame the tensions with the British. Good lord, they were not happy with that, were they? It's a pretty severe response. I know that the Blukers also need this improvement, and this should be a lot cheaper. In fact, we have a lot of space remaining for reasons I'm not exactly sure about. Everything is maxed out. We have quality one. We can go to, inc well, there are mine. We can do director on the secondaries. Um, and then we can get light AA. I guess that's the best we will want to do. And this will be still a pretty cheap refit. So let me save. And I think that this is good. Yeah, I'm not going to rebuild all of them again because of this fear that if you accidentally, I mean, if you rebuild all of them, maybe they lose that one extra design speed. Oh my god, that was much more expensive than I expected, so we'll put this last Fire Draca on Halt. 
She's only been constructed for a month, so it's still possible, very possible, to just scrap her. All right, they're coming up with 10 16-inch guns. Well, frankly, this is the 3223 configuration I myself ad greatly admire. Very strangely, they have one and a half inch secondary turrets, huge four and a half inch belt, 13 inch turrets, which is pretty heavily armored. I don't know. I mean, it's a dangerous ship, but I'm not a huge fan of it. 41,000, so they're, yeah, these are getting expensive. Okay, let's see how your flying boat compares to ours. Lower range, slightly better speed, much better maneuverability, and no idea about the reliability traits. Since the range is so comparable and it is faster, and it does have maneuverability much higher, I think the other one was two, or maybe it was three, but this one's four. So let's go ahead and purchase it and see, just wait for a little while to see if, um, if it ends up being more reliable or not. That could be what ends up you know, causing us to choose between them. We actually still don't have information on reliability on the really old fighter, which uh, would be nice if we did have. Okay, better quality one five inch guns. That's actually really important because dual purpose five inch guns are probably the most powerful in the game. Yeah, you're waiting until everyone else comes back. Okay, better submarines. Obviously with um, 21 under construction, we probably should just bite the bullet and go very heavy on submarines, but again, I wasn't really ecstatic with their performance in the last couple wars, so. Okay, torpedo breakthrough, enhanced pressure bottle. Torpedoes have better range and speed. Okay, the new flight plan, uh, float plane scout is ready for service. And the blukers have returned, three of them, so we'll get the turpits to rebuild now as well. And as soon as they come back, I mean as soon as possible really, in fact they're coming back on active fleet, I forgot about that. We'll send them to reserve, save us a little bit more money. In fact these fire dark guys, I just didn't even pay attention to them, they're not on reserve. This is going to save us a big, big amount of money. Oh boy is it. So we'll just do the control A right click reserve fleet type thing. This will send everybody who's not available, I mean who, who is available, I should say, onto reserve fleet. That's good and that has saved us. I mean, I don't know if anybody else joined after the last time I did it manually, but just in case we'll cover our bases. And that gives us enough money to, we could continue building the fire draca, but I think it's actually gonna be more important for us to rebuild these Hohenzollerns. The refits are very important, though, especially for our battle fleet. And I think we can do two more even. The, the refit is not actually that expensive because it's for 12 months. The cost is spread out pretty nicely. The Grosser Kurfürst, Fürst, has <laughs> finished construction. Oh, good. An improved torpedo bomber. This is interesting because it's gonna end up going against whatever we just requested as a as new models from the different aircraft designers. It's faster, it has much longer range, and it has one extra firepower which we're not too concerned with. Average reliability is good. I think next month we actually get the prototypes for the next one, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. We'll continue to rebuild these two at a time. We're actually in the worst shape right now, then, uh, then we will be as soon as these all come back. Let me just take a look at the fire drakas. I'm not sure if there's anything we would need to refit on these. Yeah, they're actually are in perfect condition. Good question is, did this fire draka, these are under, oh, actually this is not even a refit. It actually was just built with improved, increased, and director, wow. That's pretty impressive. And this will eventually, when we get advanced director, get the refit, which allows us to build um, dual purpose guns. We'll take away those light anti-aircraft. And this at 28, I'm actually really happy that we just accepted that um, new one to build. I'm very happy with this decision. 
The reason being is it is going to be a fine escort for our carriers. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for it to actually get assigned as an escort to the carriers. I mean, that they, we just had this new thing where carriers will be in their own group, which means that we really are going to have to design some kind of light uh, some light cruiser, anti-aircraft light cruiser, CLAA, even though those themselves won't even be guaranteed to be next to the carriers. Oh, please, Frederick, please work on a system to allow us to overhaul that. Ten additional cruisers. Of course, we're going to say, of course. It couldn't come at a better time, considering our budget was... Oh, okay, good. Lower risk of landing excellence. It's good. And here's the new torpedo bombers. We just got this upgrade, so we're not expecting them to necessarily be better. They're all slower. They all have lower range. Two, they have better maneuverability, but the same toughness. Now, maneuverability, I believe, also increases your chance to hit the target. So it's not something that we should be overlooking. And frankly, a maneuverability of four is not great. So the highest range out of these is the bottom two. And this one has, we yeah, 110 versus 145. That's still a significant difference, but seven versus four is huge. 71, okay, the speed is not that much worse. Range for scouting will only be 180 versus 230. I think this is another situation where I'm gonna accept both, but not I'm not going to obsolete the old one. And we had a better improved, wow, much improved in terms of range. That's wonderful. In fact, the maneuverability dropped. So it just goes to show you that they would consider maneuverability drop for a huge increase in range. Still an overall improvement. And who am I to argue? Toughness went up. It's nice. So let's take a look at those aircraft types again. Probably time for a fighter now. <laughs> so we'll do the same thing. We'll stress firepower first and maneuverability second. Let's take a look at what else we have. So the, the torpedo bombers, as I mentioned, I'm not really sure which one we could obsolete. We kind of want to see what the reliability for both is. Flying boat situation. Again, it's the situation where, well, maneuverability is obviously not that important. So I think we are going to simply cut this one. Our old flying boat, I believe we are just going to cut it. It's much lower range. It's like almost identical in terms of speed. Firepower is the same. Maneuverability is significantly different, 4 versus 0, but I get the impression based on the fact that maneuverability drop still results in potentially an improvement that maneuverability is not really one you really care about for flying boats. So we'll go ahead and obsolete it. We prefer the range anyway. Oh, we're really keeping this budget like running on fumes if this was a if the money was the fuel for us. So yeah, we'll be doing a new fighter. The two torpedo bombers again we want the information for reliability. Okay. And we probably could stand to build some more Bratwurstels and some more Bockenheims. We actually are missing... Okay, I, you guys have probably been screaming at me. I've only released episode 23, so I'm two episodes. That's I'm not just recording one in advance. I'm two in advance right now. This is 25, right? This is 25, 26? I have no idea. I've lost, I've lost all count. You've probably been asking me to build a new destroyer, and you're absolutely right that we do need one. So let me take a look at this design before I do anything, because this is a very efficient design, actually. It's really served us well. Um, <clears throat> the only thing wrong with it is, frankly, the 4-inch guns, which are now quality 1. I think everything is quality 1. Yeah, everything, well, 2-inch guns we don't care about, so that's actually the best thing for us not to have a quality 1. And the rest are all there. We don't have seven, which is also perfect. I will almost never build. And 13 doesn't matter. 
Honestly, with is quality zero 17 inch guns, I think what we have to do is turn our low research for naval guns onto low. We really don't need the better, like 16 inch guns themselves are already fantastic. Quality one 17 inch guns would be amazing. It's probably what I would consider an end game design at that point. But 60, quality one 16 inch guns is just already something fantastic. Really, I don't think we're going to be building a capital ship for a while. Uh, most unfortunately, we just have way too many fire drakas, and I I do blame myself. Obviously, I'm the only one, I'm the only one to blame for that. We do just have so many of them; it's going to really congest uh, our budget at the top. Even though there's something to be said with the fact that for some reason the AI is going extremely top heavy, with the only exception being it looks like they are still building enough destroyers. Now, what this means is. Heavy cruisers are going to be even less valuable than they were before. Light cruisers are only going to be needed in order to dispatch with destroyers. And destroyers, because there's so many other destroyers, actually there's not really that many. Destroyers are probably best left to uh, support duty, not torpedo duty. Although, you know, actually if you see an enemy fleet which is not very light cruiser heavy, maybe that's what we should invest in is a huge destroyer fleet. Can go back to the what is it called Jean Nicole whatever the the new navy the new theme all right so there's been an uprising in an African country we need to send a force to evacuate our nationals and protect our interests we'll send a battleship double gun mounts on DD so it's possible we could go with a gun mount DD no I don't think so okay Germany and France the war has begun. It says we only have one dreadnought. Okay, we literally have one dreadnought against the world. No, no, I get it. It's because we our fleet was on reserve, <laughs> except for one poor guy who we didn't end up catching when he came back from his refit. This is pretty hilarious. Okay, well, let's see what you can do. This is horrifying, but I'm still going to fight it. Maybe. Well, maybe we won't find them. Well, as soon as it got dark, I decided it's not worth it anymore. So this will be a good first <laughs> engagement, as in we're escaping. I actually would have been happy to engage them. Even at night. I don't care. Bring it on. The Blukers are invincible. They are not, but they are a very good... I think they're a very effective ship so far. Okay, let's end the scenario. They only had one battle cruiser. They had some destroyers and stuff, but I, w I still would have loved to have actually gone into battle with them. Let's see if that would, would have been a bad idea or not. Yeah, it would have been a great idea. We easily would have taken this out. The only disadvantage we would have had is that it could easily have run away. So we would have, I don't know who would have come out on top from that. Let's go ahead and mobilize our fleet. Wow, negative two million, that's not fantastic. We'll probably need to pause something else. You know, our fire trackers are gonna come out so quickly. We might even hold off one month before we do anything. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna wanna get a lot of things. We didn't have time to build our new... <laughs> destroyers which would have been useful but that's fine now we do have one one good news about the <clears throat> we can actually set some of our fire dracas especially the ones in fair condition can put them on trade protection now I believe we should easily blockade France <clears throat> unfortunately the bad news is that their unrest should have reset after the last war 
but yeah, they have 72, we have 284. It's easily going to be a blockade. The thing we want to do is um, begin our invasions. <clears throat> and this is exactly what we have. Oh, damn it. Are you serious? Ah, balls. What about Oh, what about here? Yes. Okay, quickly, very, very quickly. <clears throat> Cancel this. How many people do we have on Southeast Asia? We need to get some ships over there. Damn it, we just, we actually don't have that many ships. But we'll get the nice nows over. Not that I wouldn't love to have them, but... <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think that... We're probably going to be calling this video to a close now anyway, but... We haven't gotten a invasion tech increase yet. Which means the only thing which has changed is Southeast Asia. So all hands man your battle stations... Let's get to Southeast Asia as fast as possible. Now, we could have a double war here, which would not be fantastic. We probably would end up blockaded if that was the case. We'd have to do a lot of sinking. That would be a real pain in the butt. I would not be up for that. Yeah, I'm going to halt one of these. <clears throat> Just because we do need a little bit of extra money to keep that so the ships, the other ships going, we need to make it three months, which we can do at this point, and then that should feed the next one getting done, and you know snowballs from there. Actually, the Blucher is going to refit in just one more month, which is fantastic. Okay, so it's been 41 minutes, pretty much 42 minutes. I think we can go one more month to see what happens. Oh, let's get some more like cruisers down. Maybe the rest of the Mosuls. Yeah, actually, they're already parked in Southeast Asia. Let's look at the area overview. So Southeast Asia is, yeah, we're doing pretty good there. So we're hitting all the minimums, which is good. Um, what's their current fleet here? France has almost nothing. Okay, so it's a race for Southeast Asia. In fact, wait, we don't have enough big ships to really cause an invasion, so I'm not going to worry about the money. Because, I mean, it's going to be a waste of money, I think. Good. Five and five, that's ouch. So we did put two on trade protection, if I'm not mistaken. But none in West Africa, that's true. Hmm. Rate on enemy shipping, I think this is still fine. Yeah, we'll accept. Although, I guess... Hmm. Another one? Okay. I was going to say that I think that um, it would be better to avoid doing too much... I mean, eventually it's going to be bad to do actions near enemy ports because the aircraft will make a big difference. Uh, luckily, aircraft are not so far advanced yet, so we're probably okay on that front, but... Let's take a look at our aircraft group so we... Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So we have these two, which are just torpedo bomber carriers. <laughs> um, I keep... I, I do have this nagging feeling like I'm missing something. But not knowing what that is, I'll go ahead and push forward. Okay. Flying boat... Does not look like it's as good. Five. Wow, it is more firepower. That's actually more firepower than my freaking fighters have. But the range, which is, I think, the most important thing, is not there. And actually, right now, we are pretty low on money. So we keep sinking a lot of enemy submarines. So we suspect I expect that this number will continue to drop. Hell, they do have 100 submarines, so I'm pretty happy we have good AFW right now. We'll keep accepting these. Has this fire drunk us? Nope, it's actually light cruisers. Uh, I don't know if we have time to fight this or not. Forty-five minutes, probably not. Looks like we're gonna miss them entirely. We could just go for some other. Eh. Nope, guess not. And they only had uh, some destroyers. I mean, uh, one light cruiser and a couple destroyers. 
Well, technically, this is all working out in our favor just because they're being blockaded. So we're able to you know, just continually accrue some more points, put pressure on their economy. Henslorn is there. Wow. This is very bizarre. So we just basically <laughs> took four points for nothing. Very, very quick war. I honestly don't know. We don't really want to have to worry about the Mediterranean. I think taking Polynesia makes sense just because it's not very easily reachable. And I guess I will take Antilles now in the Caribbean. Well, our budget's not looking fantastic. Let's get these guys back home, and the good news is we can send everybody back to reserve. So that was a, a one turn, a one episode war. It's <laughs> just a very, very quick war. We really need to get a go, get a move on on our light carriers. I feel like 1925, we should already have a very good night light carrier. I'm actually curious if you know, please let me know. Uh, why, where, by the way, do I need ton, foreign tundra requirements? Aha, the Caribbean. Okay, that's fine. We can solve that. And it's only the Caribbean. So taking the extra one, Polynesia and South Pacific, did not affect the number of ships we're going to need there, which is amazing. It did, however, affect the, our needs in the Caribbean. But we can get away with exactly one ship. Who would have thought? Exactly one ship. In fact, do we even have Mosul's to spare? I guess not. <laughs> we don't. Oh, that's why. Actually, we're exactly perfect as soon as this one gets back in three months. Okay. Well, I can handle that. We'll put one on foreign station. We should be okay. But 47 minutes in. So in the, in the next coming episodes, what I was going to say that I kind of cut myself off is if you know how to, what the best progression is, like right now, can I custom build a, for carriers I'm talking about, can I custom build this carrier? No, we have not developed purpose-built large aircraft carriers. So the problem is, I don't know what the progression is. Am I supposed to build a light carrier that is purpose-built first? Because I don't mind doing that. Yeah, I mean, I very well could, actually. I think it's almost time to do something with these. Uh, and But purpose-built one can be... How big can it be? I assume 16,000. Yeah, so far so good. I mean, okay, let's not get caught up here. Wow, this can actually have, what, 36 is the max? 34, okay. Anyways, it's something to think about. So what's the progression? Do I have to build a purpose-built light carrier first before I can build um, a, a purpose-built full fleet carrier? Or do I need to do a conversion in order to get it? Because I, you know, will sacrifice a Gneissen now for some, you know, for that cause if I have to. Can they, I actually, I think we're only allowed 20,000, so it would have to be a whole Hensilorn, but, or wait a second, is that, is that all I need? I don't know, I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but. twenty four knots, wow. So there's no way we could do this. Anyway, food for thought. Until the next episode. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about the carriers and I'll uh I'll see you back for the next one. Take care.